Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Allen and I'm a student in Material Science and Engineering here at Virginia Tech. And in this tutorial, I'll be giving a brief overview of the Granta EduPack Materials Database and how to navigate it, as well as how to construct ASPE plots and conduct a preliminary material selection process. So to start off, when you open up the Granta EduPack application, you'll see this page with databases. And so generally, you might want to think about starting at level one. It's just the different how how intense the materials are. So you've got the the simple materials like your uh, simple ferrous metals, and more complicated, more refined stuff for say bioengineering. And you can change that. So if we select like, level one materials here, and if we ever just want to change that, you can just go up home, hit change database and select whatever we want. And for this case, we're gonna select the material science and engineering database. Now, what you want to do here is, so I'm gonna be walking through a material selection process. So say you're building something for a spaceship. So you're gonna to wanna to consider all the different things that it's gonna be exposed to and the important properties for it. So to get started with that, we can create different filters to pass the materials in the database through and then see what materials perform the best and pass all the restrictions we set on it. So to start with that, we're gonna go up to the top bar and hit chart slash select. And that's just gonna let us filter through everything in the database. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna set limits. So we're gonna set bounds on the different properties that we want, like the maximum and minimum yield strength and so on and so forth. So we're gonna click on that. And now we have all these different properties we can choose from. And there's a lot, but so again, this is theoretically for a material that will be used on a rocket. So for something like that, obviously we can go to durability, flammability. You can see there's a, you can enter in their percentage limiting oxygen index, as well as you can pick the flammability rating. And obviously, if there's something on a rocket, we want it to be non-flammable. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to go to durability in built environment. And we're going to go to UV radiation and sunlight. And you might be like, what's that referring to? Well, for pretty much anything on these different limits pages, you click on that, and it'll provide a brief overview and what types of materials are really good at that and the underlying mechanisms. So say with polymers, they'll naturally, some will, of them will degrade when exposed to UV radiation. So that can be helpful if you're trying to learn more about what exactly it is you want to limit or not. So for that, we're gonna say excellent UV radiation. So and then, so those are the two, those are the two uh, durability things we want to consider. And then we also want something that's going to be easy to machine because some materials that can be really strong and really, really effective, but it can be really hard to get them in the shape you want. This happens a lot with aircraft parts. So we want something that's going to be easy to process and shape into whatever you want. So you can go here and there's different options for how, how easy it is to process various materials. So we're just going to say we want to be able to form it and weld it pretty easily. So if you ever want more information on what exactly those are, those are you just click on there. There's also this handy little tool here. If you click on that, it shows the range. So it gives you an idea of how formable different classes of materials are. It's broken down into polymers, metals, composites, and ceramics. So you can see here, composites aren't super formable but metals and alloys and polymers can be, so that, that'll give you an idea of what exactly we'll be getting in our search. So, like I said, it goes a three to five scale, so we're gonna put in a three for formability and a three for weldability. And that's all we're gonna do now for the uh, preliminary properties. So we're gonna hit apply. Now, say if you're gonna be designing a, uh, a rocket ship, you're gonna have to think to yourself, okay, what materials do I want to use broadly? Like, do I want to use composites? Do I want to use polymers? Well, you probably don't wanna use polymers, but part of this is, see right now, you can see 22 different results here, but we want to narrow that down further. So say you only want to use metals, for example, then you can go to this select from, it'll say 
the materials universe, which is the database we chose back at the beginning, which again, we can change. And we're going to say, we want only metals and alloys. So we'll click on that. And then you get these results right here. And now we're going to apply some more filters. So we're going to hit limit again. And now we want something that's going to be fairly, fairly, fairly strong. So we're going to go to the Young's modulus under mechanical properties. And again, if we click on this, we can get an idea of the range of values. So you'll have your softer metals over here and your harder, more ductile ones over here. So we're going to put in a limit of, let's, let's say, 1 times 10 to the 11. So the way you enter that in is with that notation right there. Now, it's a little bit different from what you may be used to, but it's nothing nothing too advanced. And then we're going to want to see, okay, we don't want something that's super dense, like, say, lead, because then it gets harder to lift the, the rocket that we'd be theoretically using this for. So you go to density, again, get an idea of the sort of range we're dealing with here. And we're going to say that we want to limit it to about... Let's just say uh, 20,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, you might be thinking when I say that. Oh, just realized that. I didn't know that, actually. It doesn't like commas. So, if I'm going to use commas, just use regular, just type out the integers or use scientific notation. You might be thinking, that's a lot, but we're probably going to be using very, very thin sheets of this metal. Again, theoretical. We don't have a better idea of what the bounds are for what we're looking for. If we know the specific application, but this is, again, just a broad hypothetical experiment. So now we're going to hit apply and see if you see over here, these are 15 elements. And if you ever want to change, you can set it up so that it has to fit all of these criteria we have listed here or only one of them. So that can be useful in some cases. Now we go to selection stages. We've been doing limits to filter out the element, the materials, excuse me, that do not have the properties we need. But now we hit chart slash index, and that will plot the remaining materials. So on the x-axis, we're going to just do something simple, like the price. So we go to general properties, and it selects price. There you go. And now it's going to auto-select auto scale and logarithmic scale. So we're just going to leave those as is in this case, but on the y-axis, as I'll show in just a minute, it can be useful to change those at times. Now for the y-axis, we're going to do something advanced where we take the ratio of two properties. So you don't always need to do this. And sometimes you can work around this by having your filters set up differently. But I'm just going to show you how to do that here. So you're going to click on advanced properties. And then you're going to put brackets and around the different properties you want to use. So let's just say we want the ratio of tensile to compressive strength. And we might want that because the material is going to be subject to a lot of tensile and compressive forces. And we want to make sure that it can hold up well in either of those. So let's just say... type in tensile strength, remember to surround it with brackets there, and then slash to divide, and then compressive strength. So we do that, and that'll give us the ratio of those two, and we select OK. And now here, we can make it linear because we'll be it's a ratio, so we're going to be dealing with uh, smaller values. So it's not like Young's modules where you're doing tens or tens of thousands of, of pascals, for example. And we're going to say set. We're going to set the range because we don't want something with a, a super high ratio one way or another because something is really strong in tension and not compression, it's going to have a very high ratio. And then if, if, it, if it's in tension, it's fine. But again, we're assuming it would be subject to both of those loading conditions, and therefore we need it to be strong in both. So we're just going to bound it, say, being negative one and three. But that negative one bound doesn't really do anything because the lowest the ratio can be would be infinitely close to zero. But sometimes materials, they if it's not given a value, it's automatically assigned zero. So we don't want to 
we don't want to block those materials out. But that should be everything now. So we're going to hit OK. And this plots the materials that we have. So you can see the different materials. And you might be thinking, that's interesting. They're all ellipses or ovals. And that's sort of one of the drawbacks of this system is that it only deals with the stock materials. So like your, your typical low alloy steels, for example, there's tons of different alloying elements you can add to it that would give it different properties. And that, that could affect this tensile strength and compressive ratio, or it could affect the price. You don't see it too, too wide here, too much of a difference because you're usually adding those alloying elements in very, very small amounts. As you can see, there can be a big variation in this ratio here. So that's sort of one of the drawbacks of this, but it could give you an idea of where you want to start. So say, for example, if you can afford up to 100 US dollars per kilogram of material, you might want to look at, say, tungsten alloys. Or if you really are on a budget and want something super cheap for, some, say, some sort of, uh, what do you call it, sacrificial layer, like something cheaper, like cast iron. Now, you probably wouldn't do that because it's very brittle, but that's not something we consider in here. This is just talking through the sort of reasons you might choose something on this side of this chart. So that's just basically how you want to make an Ashby plot, how you can filter out different materials according to what properties you want. So, if there's ever questions you have, what you can always do is click this wonderful help button. And there's video tutorials right here from the folks that designed this software. So that's, that can be very helpful. I used that quite a bit in getting to know this material. So our last thing to save it, just hit file, save project, and now you can name it, let's just say project one. I shouldn't have to say this. Please give it a more descriptive name when you're saving your projects, because then you'll have project one, project two, project three, and you don't know which is which. But this is fine for right now. That's just, I'm just showing you how to save a project. Hit save and you're all done. So that concludes this brief overview. I hope you learned something and thank you for your time.